In studio on the BT couch. Uh, don't even know where to start with you. We're going to have to call it rapid fire. Hi, First Jody. of all, thanks for being here. Great to be here. Nice. So, for is it your birthday's next Friday? Yes. Is it good one? It's the thing about the world today. You can't hide anything like that. Anymore. Nope. My birthday's out there as well. <laughs> We just have to put so pre birthday wishes to you. Thank you do you have much. a big celebration planned? We do. Uh, seven of uh, my brothers and sisters are going to be out uh, at Starnaway with us, and we're going to have a big family party. So that includes most of the grandchildren and great grandchildren. There are going to be 45 of us. There is a picture, <laughs> second oldest of 10 right. sibs, right? right? And I'm the one with the beard. No, <laughs> no, no big surprise there. And so I can rhyme them all off in order Colleen, Tommy, Peter, Jeannie, Danny, Debbie, Sheila, Maureen, Kelly, and Sean, and my oh. parents. Oh. <laughs> Now, speaking of kids, many kids, clearly your parents had to deal with a great deal of child care. They did, and my mom did a lot of that, but she was also working. My mom taught, and she actually, it's a family joke, but she actually taught at a reform school, as it was called back then, so we said it was, we who prepared her for that job, but, uh, so they, yeah, they went through the same thing as everyone was trying to scramble. Catherine and I went through that a lot, too, trying to find a, a place, and now uh, we've got grandchildren, and, you know, our kids, uh, in the Quebec system, it's a little bit better, it's lower cost, so we're trying to come up with a plan across Canada where parents would pay no more than $15 a day which we think is a fair amount. We'd work with the provinces and territories. 60% uh, would be paid by the feds, 40 by the provinces. You know, it's such a need across the country. It's been talked about for 30 years, but we're going to finally get it done if we form government in 2015. When first hearing about this $15 a day child care number, so many people said, wait, how are we paying for that? So you say 60% federal support 40 percent comes from the province is that hitting the taxpayer tax dollar no don't forget we've said very clearly we're not going to touch personal income taxes and in fact we'll give breaks to small businesses but Canada's largest corporations are not paying their fair share Mr. Harper's given them 50 billion dollars in tax breaks and governing is about priorities for us this is a priority we're actually going to get it done but yeah we're going to start making sure that Canada's largest corporations pay their fair share exhausted parents in uh, British Columbia certainly after the teachers issues one and two here in BC there are a lot of families that are newcomers often they used to rely on the third generation the grandparents and they're not allowed to come over anymore no more family reunification under the Conservatives so that's another trap that's been set for families so again we think that by building this up it is early childhood education people are being trained to a good level now it's great for the kids it gives them a better start in life so we're gonna make it a priority gonna go rapid fire with okay. you if I may here I've got a couple of notes because there are so many things that I in doing research with you uh, First and foremost, Montreal Champlain Bridge, the most important bridge in Canada? It's certainly the busiest bridge in Canada. That's an objective measure of it. It's also the, the most important in terms of the volume that's going straight to the U.S., where it's only about a half, away, a half an hour away from the U.S. border. Champlain Bridge, don't forget, is a federal infrastructure. It was put in as part of the Seaway project. That was a huge U.S.-Canada project put in after the Second World War. So you have hundreds of thousands of families that have relied on that bridge. The federal government's saying it's going to be replaced because it's about to fall down. It's a good idea to replace it. But now now they're going to put in a huge toll. Well, that's not fair. It's not a new bridge in What's another huge? section. Well, it's going to be for the families. It'll be hundreds of dollars a month. Right. So you're talking to an audience of people who are paying for the uh, Portman Bridge at three dollars each way right now. Yeah, after a crumbling and they're talking bridge. about more than that. But don't forget, that's a provincial infrastructure. When Quebec put in a new bridge recently, I was part of the government. I was a minister when we put it in. We put a toll on that. That's not a problem. You're putting in a new bridge. You're putting in a toll. Fair enough. This is an existing federal infrastructure that the federal government has always said that it would put in. To, to replace a new, they put in a new one, but now they want to hit families with that tax, and they removed the, the same toll uh, that they were about to put in when they were doing the same thing recently in St. John, New Brunswick. So we think that it's not fair, and that families deserve a break. It's going to be interesting when the backlash comes out if that does come into play for those on the outside of Quebec looking in. It seems yeah. a very Montreal Well, not really, because it is, it's a federal bridge. If it was a federal bridge somewhere what else, we'd have this thing. Federal the bridge. federal government was responsible for the Seaway project. The federal government put in that bridge as part of the Seaway project. It is 100% federal responsibility. It was a federally constructed bridge. The two bridges you just mentioned are provincial bridges here in BC. Right, and then there's the one that goes to Prince Edward Island that costs $45 to cross. Yeah, but that's again, another. that's a completely different uh, uh, kettle of fish. Here we're talking about replacing an existing structure that the federal government is 100% responsible for. Okay, I don't want to harp on the bridge too much. I, I do love the clarity that you bring to that. Thank you for that. What about, what are your thoughts on LNG? 
Liquefied natural gas in and of itself is not the problem. We're not talking, for example, like asbestos, where it's the actual substance that's the problem, but it's how you get it, how you transport it, and there are real dangers and risks involved. So you have to be very careful. The coast of BC, especially the northern coast, is such a particularly pristine ecosystem. When you talk about bringing LNG or any other pro uh, product up there, you have to be super careful. Mr. Harper's gotten rid of main sections of the Navigable Waters Protection Act, the Species at Risk Act. There's no more real thorough environmental assessment in Canada. In fact, the Conservatives often talk about environmental approval process as if the result was a foregone conclusion. Canadians deserve better, future generations deserve better, and we right. think that we have to get back to a system where we look at the whole project before saying yes. And you have made political decisions in your career based on not wanting to give up environmental situations that's, for condo developments, That's et right. I was asked to sign an order in council that would have transferred land in a provincial park to private developers. I refused to do it. I quit cabinet over that and went uh, with Jack Layton federally, and, and now we're there in a position to talk seriously about sustainable development. What's your stance on uh, marijuana legalization? I think that use of marijuana by an adult is an absolutely personal choice, so legalization is in, includes the idea that we would be in charge of supply. That's a bit tricky. We would certainly de decriminalize overnight and then we'd work with provinces and territories to come up with the best system to make sure that we put something in place where it didn't become a huge social problem. We'd work with law enforcement but at the present time in Canada you get a criminal record even for minor possession or personal use. It should be an absolutely personal matter. Nobody should ever have a criminal record for using marijuana. So many other questions for you. The Honourable Thomas Mulcair. The last one is the statement that I read last night about pro-choice or uh, abortion laws and how the NDP's stance is The on NDP's that. always been clear on that. There's never been any real debate uh, amongst our, our MPs. It's been a long-standing position that this is a matter of choice for women. It's women's reproductive rights and it's up to them to make those tough choices. Fascinating to have you here, sir. Nice Thank to you see very Jody. much. All the best. Everybody out there watching right now is going, please let there be childcare for $15, <laughs> but also don't raise our taxes to we'll do, do so. It.